Welcome to Radflix 1996. My name is Joe. These are just opinions. I am, I am Joe, Joe Pinionated. What is a rad flick? A rad flick is a movie that has stood the test of time. Forget what those asshats, those critics and the award shows said back in 1996. They didn't have time on their side. We have a panel of normal Canadians, a panel of normal people that have voted for certifying these movies as rad. From our panel of normal people, we have a guest today. That is Caro. Uh, welcome, Hi. Caro, to Radflix 1996. This is so much fun. I'm definitely high on facts and low on opinions. <laughs> yeah, finally, somebody high on facts. Back in 1996, uh, the Academy Awards, they handed out some awards. Uh, best Picture went to The English Patient. Best Director to Anthony Minghella for The English Patient. Best Actor to Jeffrey Rush for Shine. And Best Actress went to Frances McDormand playing Marge Gunderson in Fargo. Of those four picks, I mean, that's probably the, the one I agree with the most. I did like The English Patient. I remember it was one of the only movies I ever went to in a theater where everybody sat through the credits and waited for the lights to turn on in the theater before they got up and left. Heartbreaking. I went with my mom. Yeah, I really liked the movie, actually. I thought it was pretty good. I remember watching it a few times when I was younger. Definitely up the artsy fartsy alley, but Rafe Fiennes really owns this. Juliet Binoche is great too, but Rafe Fiennes stand out. Also in 1996, some famous people we lost. Tupac Shakur was gunned down in Las Vegas. The being a Tyson fight with Suge Knight, one of the greatest rappers of all time, if not the greatest. John Benet Ramsey, that was 1996. Tiny Tim, the folk singer, one of the greatest singers of all time. Ella Fitzgerald passed away in 1996. She was born in 1917. Gene Kelly passed away. Carl Sagan, famous cosmos physicist, a world educator. Carl Sagan, mini pearl. We're going to get into rad flicks now. The first category rad flicks 1996 we're certifying these movies rad the first category is horror and in horror this year we have five finalists the first finalist directed by the man wes craven stars nev campbell and courtney cox the movie is scream drew barrymore was in scream she was in the first scene of scream you know and everybody grow if you grew up in my generation just love drew barrymore we grew up with her playing gertie and et yeah it's a big deal wes craven makes cool movies kind of felt like a bit of a horror revival when it came out because it felt like there wasn't a lot of great horror movies for a few years and then scream came out something original this is kind of like if all of a sudden marvel created a new superhero it was kind of like that yeah. where it's just like we're getting so tired of jason and freddy killing everybody okay cool a new idea this mask a different mask a different whatever like thank god somebody did something different and wes craven is so great at that i love the people under the stairs where we talked about that a couple episodes ago horror movies are traditional like they're like it's dark you can't see you know you're not sure but with scream it was like vivid easy to watch next up directed by tom holland and starring robert burke and john mantegna mantegna montana based off a of stephen king classic stephen king's come up more than anybody the movie is thinner i love this movie actually and what a great book and what a great idea i just love the gypsy i was a real big stephen king fan when i was younger and read all of his books it's a super cool story careful what you wish for you'll have to start a book a book one joe and do stephen king books yeah that's not gonna fucking happen and then vote in the put in the comments if you want joe to do a book review <laughs> that'll be really quick it'll be like robert munch next up from robert rodriguez uh teamed up with quentin tarantino and uh, george Clo sorry george clooney selma hayek harvey keitel and quentin tarantino the movie is dusk till dawn from dusk till dawn okay it's a cool show it's a cool show and then there's just a major twist halfway through the show i dig it grindhouse style of movie juliette lewis is in this movie cheech marin excellent movie danny trejo is incredible in from dusk till dawn i don't know if i'd call it a horror it's absolutely a suspense Next up, directed by Peter Jackson, starring Trina Alverdo and Michael J. Fox. The movie is The Frighteners, critically acclaimed. And uh, Peter Jackson does an amazing job with the special effects. I remember the special effects being kind of like frighteningly good. Wasn't expecting that at all. It kind of almost seems like a, like a goofy kids movie at times. Mm -hmm. And... It's just the special effects are kind of creepy good. The final finalist for Radis Horror Suspense, this is a suspense, comes from director James Foley, starring Reese Witherspoon and Marky Mark, Mark Wahlberg in Fear. When you're young and you're dating and a psycho, which most people, you know, are 
you dated when you were young, you probably dated someone that was a little bit wild. And Marky Mark, he is scary. I think Alyssa Milano's in this movie. Yeah. Sleeping with the Enemy was a good movie. This, this is different, I think, because it's more of a coming of age type of movie. Like, so there's a mix of a lot of different themes awesome. in this movie. I actually like this movie better than Sleeping with the Enemy. And even though I know Sleeping with the Enemy is a classic and you know, the soup cans and everything. And this movie is definitely not as well known. Like most people haven't seen this movie. It's more of a an out, outlier, but it's a good movie. And if you haven't watched it, watch it. And the winner of Radis Horror Suspense of 1996 goes to Wes Craven's Scream. Runner up goes to From Dust Till Dawn. And the third place goes to Thinner. Next category, Radis Comedy. First finalist for Radis Comedy, 1996. And there's seven of them. First finalist directed by Ben Stiller, starring Matthew Broderick and Jim Carrey. It's the cable guy. It's a dark comedy. For me, the cable guy reminds me so much of when Jim Carrey went on Saturday Night Live to promote the cable guy. Probably my favorite episode of Saturday Night Live. Jim Carrey, huge star. So he's coming off of 1994. Uh, he made those Dumb and Dumber, The Mask. Ace Venture, 1995, Batman Forever. Then The Cable Guy. This is a cult classic. I love this movie. For me, this movie is like a fine wine. It gets better with age. What are your thoughts, Carol? Cable Guy. I have a friend and she's actually married to the cable guy that came to change her cable. Super funny. A bit of a thriller. Jim Carrey did such a good job. Like you'd kind of cringe for Jim Carrey in that movie. Next Radis Comedy from 1996 finalist. Directed by Tom... Shadyak, starring Jada Pinkett Smith, Dave Chappelle, Eddie Murphy. The movie is The Nutty Professor. Funny story, I was watching it tonight at dinner time. Eddie Murphy puts on a bunch of fat suits and plays the, what are they, the clumps? Plays it in an entire family. Jerry Lewis, classic, The Nutty Professor. What are, what are your thoughts on this one? Oh, this is such a cool movie with Eddie Murphy playing all those characters. Like, it was a big deal. Eddie, of course, super funny guy. Next finalist directed by Wes Anderson from 1996, starring Luke and Owen Wilson. The movie is Bottle Rocket, his first big feature film. Uh, he was roommates with Owen Wilson in university, became fast friends. This movie came out as a bit of a flop, but it gained this sort of underground cult following. I find this movie to be one of the most outright hilarious movies by Wes Anderson. One of my favorites. Check out my Wes Anderson list on this channel to see where Bottle Rocket finishes. Actually, I'll just show you right now. At number five, I'm going with the movie Bottle Rocket from 1996. Next up from the directors of Dumb and Dumber, the Farrelly Brothers, their next movie starring Bill Murray and Woody Harrelson and Randy Quaid. The movie is Kingpin. Bowling. Ten pin bowling. What is it about good sex that always makes me have to crap? One of my favorite movies from this year. I love this movie, Kingpin. I mean, so funny. Ernie McCracken. I just love the, I love Bill Murray's comb over in this movie. I'd love to know, you know, I'd love to watch like a behind the scenes thing on this. Just who came up with what? Must yeah. have been one of the funniest movies to be on the set. Dennis Quaid is just loopy. And with Woody Woody Harrelson and Bill Murray. Next finalist from 1996, directed by Dennis Dugan, starring Christopher McDonald and Adam Sandler and Carl Weathers. Rest in peace is Chubbs Peterson. The movie is Happy Gilmore, about a hockey player starts playing golf to save his grandma's house. Iconic movie. They're filming a second um see the second movie actually it's just going into production now and i can't wait to see it i love this movie bob barker's in this movie i mean love to see bob barker like there's we all grew up watching the prices right you know and it was a thing <laughs> shooter mcgavin meet you on the ninth at nine why don't you get some hay live down by the bay i just may what do you say you have to tap it in just tap it in kevin nealon i love Ke happy <laughs> I love Kevin Nealon in his series where he walks through the Hollywood Hills with his guests. Kevin Nealon's like just incredible comic talent. This movie, start to finish, get in your happy place. It's in the top three for me for funniest movies I ever saw in the theater. It was uh, Dumb and Dumber. This one, years later, Team America, World Police. But honestly, I think that this was the funniest one. I remember one of the people from a rad panel, Scott from the Normal People panel, just dying. Never seen people laugh so hard. I've rewatched this movie. I don't even know how many times I've watched this movie so many goddamn times it's so funny yeah and to see bob barker and and adam sandler throw down in a fight was just so unexpected and so just out of left field that 
it just had everybody laughing. Next up, directed by Christopher Guest, starring Christopher Guest and Eugene Levy. The movie is Waiting for Guffman from 1996. It's it's about a small town where they're awaiting uh, Guffman, uh, this like theater production to take place. It's just that really funny, like best to show Eugene Levy, Christopher Guest type of humor. And the final finalist for 1996 is directed by Mike Nichols, starring Nathan Lane and Robin Williams in The Birdcage. This one also finished very high on the Discord Normal People panel. It finished as a finalist for 1996. Do you remember this one, Carol? Oh, yeah. This was a big deal because it's still a little bit taboo back in 1996. A little bit of cross-dressing in this movie. And it was a good movie. I like this movie. Yeah. Nathan Lane, too. Excellent. Him and Robin worked together a few times and uh, he worked well obviously on Mrs. Doubtfire as well. Uh, Nathan Lane p- played his brother. The winner for Raddest Comedy of 1996 goes to Happy Gilmore. A hilarious comedy. Once again, Carl Weathers, rest in peace, Chubbs Peterson. The runner up for Funniest Comedy of 1996 goes to the Farrelly Brothers Kingpin. And both of these movies are start to finish, laugh out loud, hilarious. They're both rated R. In the next category for Radflix 1996 is Raddest Action Sci-Fi Adventure. We have six finalists. The first one is directed by Brian De Palma, co-starring John Voight and Tom Cruise. The movie is Mission Impossible. Ethan Hunt, agent at the IMF. The special effects, him flying through the air, him riding on the train, him dropping into that vault. Yeah, and the stunts on this movie are epic. Mission Impossible, it really, really set the bar high for adventure movies. It is, is a great movie. I think everybody saw this movie. It was probably one of the biggest earners of the year, I'm sure. This next one, though, was also a big deal. Uh, directed by Michael Bay, starring Nicolas Cage and Sean Connery. Show the man now, dog. The movie is The Rock. Another one I watched recently with Ed Harris. Terrorists that take over Alcatraz in San Francisco. And they have some sort of chemical weapons. Sean Connery is this dangerous guy that escaped from Alcatraz. Michael Bay, really clean, big blockbuster action movies car chases cool car chase through dirty harry style through the streets of san francisco i watched it once a few years ago and i didn't think it aged well and i watched it again like i said recently and i like quite liked it again the panel of normal canadians has certified this one as rad we've already talked about this one directed by robert rodriguez harvey Gaitel, george clooney quentin tarantino from dust till dawn so that finishes as a finalist and that's yeah, I see it more as an action sci-fi adventure. I mean, it's all three of those. Up next, directed by Rennie Harlan, starring Gina Davis and Samuel L. Jackson. The movie is Long Kiss Goodnight. A suburban housewife struggling with amnesia, discovers that she has a violent past and she's a skilled government assassin. I definitely watched it. I do. I totally forgot about this movie. So props to the Normal People panel for putting this one in the finals next up directed by tim burton starring pierce brosnan and jack nicholson the movie is mars attacks so mars attacks got kind of beat up at the start when it first came out it was sort of a critical success but didn't really gather the cult following until years later and now it's it's a cult classic Mars Attacks. Uh, Jack Nicholson's awesome in it. And it's directed by Tim Burton. Every single movie that this guy's touched has been a finalist or, you know, in the conversation for finalist, raddest movies of those particular years. The final finalist for raddest action sci-fi adventure, 1996, goes to Roland Emmerich's directed Independence Day starring Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum. Randy Quaid, maybe the biggest blockbuster of the year. I mean, it was one of them for sure. This movie was huge. And it was all about special effects and the previews were just like real teaser kind of previews and countdowns. You're going to go watch this movie strictly for special effects. And it was pretty cool. The plot was not great. It wasn't as good as it, as it could have been because the special effects in this were like groundbreaking. It's certified rad. It's definitely a movie that we all watched and we all kind of appreciated it at the time. I'd agree with you on that. Like, because the special effects were so groundbreaking, everyone saw it and were in awe of it, but it wasn't a movie you went to for a good plot and a good story. It was a movie you went to to watch the excitement of them figuring out how to make this stuff look real. So that's why you went to see Independence Day and everybody saw it. It was Bill Pullman that played the president in Independence Day. I'll watch anything with Jeff Goldblum in it. It's a handsome dude. The raddest action sci-fi adventure of 1996 goes to The Rock. And that's Michael Bay again. Funny thing is that it's the first time a movie has won without a single first place vote. Second place votes 
across the board for raddest action sci-fi adventure of 1996 runner up going to from dusk till dawn next category raddest family movie 1996 family movie night we have nine finalists the first one is directed by danny devito co-starring mara wilson and ria perlman based on roll dolls novel the movie is matilda when i was growing up matilda was maybe my favorite book as a little kid so i was really excited actually when this movie came out even though i wasn't really a kid anymore danny devito is so great everybody loves danny devito wonderful story it's heartwarming it's a bit scary in places got some suspense in there i really like this movie it's a good movie for a family next up directed by henry zellick starring paul terry and joanna lumley in another roll doll classic the movie is James and the Giant Peach, or another book that elementary school teachers read to me. So props to you if you're watching. My kids actually both really do like this movie. I don't think I ever watched it when it came out initially. I think I've only watched it once I had kids of my own. Joanna Lumley is a British classic from Absolutely Fabulous. If you haven't seen that show, go and watch it. It's hilarious. Next up, starring Sheena Easton and Charlie Sheen, directed by Paul Sabella and Larry Leaker. The movie is All Dogs Go to Heaven Do. Another uh, tearjerker animated movie for dog lovers. And we own it. We own the, we have the, the DVD package for part one and part two. Can't say I watched this when I was a kid. I didn't. I knew a lot of dog lovers out there that did. My relatives on Salt Spring. I've seen All Dogs Go to Heaven when it came out, for sure. Good movie. Next up, directed by Joe Pitka, starring Michael Jordan and all the Looney Tunes. <laughs> the movie is Space Jam. This movie was an epic movie. So Michael Jordan is, you know, in real life playing basketball against the Looney Tunes. Yeah, it couldn't get any bigger than Michael Jordan at that time. And then, you know, hitting all of us uh, parents who grew up with Looney Tunes taking our kids to that movie. So very well done. Here's my thought on Space Jam. I never liked it, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, number two, making rad flicks. I've talked about uh, Robert Zemeckis many, many times. And he's like sort of a pioneer when it comes to special effects. Robert Zemeckis, when he made Who Framed Roger Rabbit, he really married the two worlds, the cartoon and the, and the real world well. Mm -hmm. Whereas I thought in Space Jam, I couldn't tell that it was any better, even though it's eight years newer. I think with Space Jam, like it's got the nostalgia thing in it, right? With the Looney Tunes. And then you've got the the hit guy of the, the time so you're getting people on the nostalgia that will come and watch that movie because that movie is commercially extremely successful who framed roger rabbit was way better you can't compare the two because they're just one is just leagues above this but but space jam has has that other factor that got people through the door and watching this movie worshiping michael jordan and bucks yeah. bunny next movie directed by brian henson from 1996 starring kevin bishop and tim curry the movie is muppet treasure island we have some big jim henson frank oz fans on the panel so we get a lot of jim henson pretty much everything jim henson touched starting with star wars and working through the 80s especially tim curry excellent in this movie next up for raddest family movie uh directed by cameron crow tom cruise and uh, renee zellwinger the movie is jerry Maguire, also cuba goody jr i think he might he won the oscar for this movie show me the money romantic drama family movie night i don't think so but anyways well i think this is an excellent family movie <laughs> classic feel good story about busy overworked guy realizing that there's more to life than just working there's love and that little kid in that movie is so cute all right i really loved this movie i thought it was great renee zellwinger was a major babe i know all the girls love Cuba Gooding and Tom Cruise and all that stuff. A Cameron Crowe movie. And so Cameron Crowe movies all have a ton of heart. All of them. They usually have some kind of relationship. There's usually amazing music in the, in the movie because Cameron Crowe is a music nut. That's why I like this movie. It's a Cameron Crowe movie. I like all the Cameron Crowe movies. James L. Brooks co-produced it. Next up for raddest family movie of 1996 uh, goes to Happy Gilmore. It's definitely rated R. There's lots of swearing. Depends on how old I... your kids are. I think you should show your kids this movie before they leave home in that respect. This movie falls under it as one of the funniest movies ever made. And I, I am one of those parents that watch this movie with my kids. And I have two, actually. So, yeah, that's not. I'm just letting you guys know, like, don't like follow our advice. 
make sure you check out the rating make sure you, it's okay for yourself first remember there's a playlist of all the trailers in the description below as well okay next up directed by paris barkley starring the entire wayans family from in living color sean and marlon waynes specifically the movie is don't be a menace in south central while drinking your juice in the hood a spoof of all those don't be a uh, menace to society juice boys in the hood it like, kind of brings them all into one under this wayans brothers parody movie one of their first parody movies i mean keenan ivory waynes is basically responsible for all of his brothers and sisters becoming huge stars kim waynes marlon waynes and also jim carrey and everybody at, at, in living color jim carrey auditioned for saturday night live twice didn't get the gig thank god he got in living color definitely watch this movie a few times i loved all those movies that it's you know a parody of hurry up and buy hurry up and buy next up directed by robert lieberman it's starring emilio estevez the movie is d3 the mighty ducks this is uh the mighty ducks part three i'm trying to figure out if i did watch this one you know i I love the Mighty Ducks, like the, and I loved Emilio Estevez, like because he played Billy the Kid in Young Guns. Anyways, long story, but there was uh, there was a big crush going on there. Yeah, I don't remember actually seeing D three, but like I said, probably have seen it. And the winner for raddest family movie of nineteen ninety six goes to goes to Roll Dolls Matilda, directed by Danny DeVito, this girl with the uh, magical powers. She's not very well off. Her parents don't pay attention to her. They're kind of scumbags. A bit of comfort with her elementary school teacher who saves her from the murderous Miss Trunchbull, the evil principal. Love this story growing up. And second place for Radis Family Movie of 1996 goes to Space Jam. Next category uh, from the Overlook Hotel is Radis drama of 1996 there's five for finalists of radis drama 1996 the first directed by a legendary director milos foreman starring woody harrelson and courtney love in an incredible role she played as well i think she cleaned up off the dope for this one the movie is the people versus larry flint true story about hustler founder larry flint and about uh trial that he had norm mcdonald's also in this movie too woody harrelson and courtney love tour de forest with one of the greatest directors of all time milos forman woody harrelson was awesome in this movie woody harrelson can act he's not just the dumb farm boy from iowa tendon bar at cheers that boy can act milos and he was nominated again for best director on this one after taking home best director twice before this with uh one flew over the cuckoo's nest and amadeus next finalist for radis drama of 1996 goes to danny boyle's train spotting starring ewan mcgregor and ewan bremer when i get two ewans very uh british of them and danny boyle <laughs> directing train spotting this is a movie about some junkies it's under drama here it's you could say it's an action you could say it's a comedy it kind of fits under most umbrellas high paced incredible special effects you really kind of get an idea of what it feels like to be addicted to heroin really think about him swimming into the toilet bowl sinking into the in, into the rug when he's overdosing but yeah it was such a good dive into like what it's like to be addicted to substances and have some type of a substance use disorder but uh seeing that movie you really can feel like how awful and how it you know, the agony and the ecstasy of drug addiction. And I think this was Ewan McGregor's kind of breakout role. Next up, uh, mentioned multiple times on this channel as well, Joel and Ethan Cohen co-directed this one. Starring Francis McDormand, William H. Macy, Steve Buscemi. The movie is Fargo. Based on a true story, not at all a true story, but the, the Coens like to put that at the start of their, their movie. Such a great idea. The story of Marge Gunderson, pregnant police officer played by um, Francis McDormand, one of the greatest characters ever. And you got to throw in William H. Macy to that as well. His character, one of the best characters in movie history as well. Steve Buscemi, one of the greatest villains in a movie as well. Fargo, it's one of the greatest movies ever made. It's one of the Coen Brothers' greatest movies. Like I said, check out my channel. Check out my Coen Brothers list on this channel. Oh, geez. Yeah. Francis McDormand is incredible in this movie. William H. Macy, like what a what a story, you know, Steve Buscemi. Like I discovered this show from watching uh, Cisco and Ebert, and I remember watching the scene that they showed on it, which is from the trailer when the bad guys are at the lady's window, going to break in and kidnap her. Just that scene alone, I remember just being horrified watching it. It just seemed so real, and and Coen, like I th that was my first introduction to the Coen Brothers. Was this movie Fargo? 
and I think one of the best movies I've ever seen. If I rank the decade, this is definitely going to come up in the top 10 list for myself anyways. Next up, 1996, directed by Stephen Hopkins, uh, starring Val Kilmer, Michael Douglas. The movie is The Ghost in the Darkness. I think I remember wanting to watch it just for the, the stars, and I remember not being that crazy about it. Final finalist for Radis Drama 1996, directed by Billy Bob Thornton, starring Dwight Yoakam, Billy Bob Thornton, John Ritter. The movie is Sling Blade. At the time, this is when I thought I was like, you know, being a movie nerd. All I was really doing was watching Cisco and Ebert every single week. I'd find those movies and then go watch them. And especially when they said something was great. Billy Bob Thornton, you know, r- writes this role for himself and slays, slays literally, specifically with a lawnmower blade. Not really the most watchable movie, but definitely some memorable performances. Uh, they stay with you i reckon i love this movie i'm a i'm a big fan of dwight yoakam did he ever kill it in this movie too but yeah billy bob thornton he would have performance he put in this is an awesome movie dwight yoakam's like the villain in this movie the winner is fargo for raddest drama of 1996 runner up going to train spotting second place with a bullet is train spotting so the next category is most watched for 1996 on a rad normal panel of normal people carol's on there why don't you go first carol for your most watch for 1996 uh third most watch was fear second was happy gilmore and first was hands down fargo Next up, Ox. Second most watched is Happy Gilmore. Her most watched is Scream. Next up, Jesse. Third most watched for Jesse is Kingpin. Second most watched is Scream. And most watched movie of 1996 for Jesse goes to Happy Gilmore. Like I said before, a huge Adam Sandler fan. Ian's most watched. Third, The Rock. Second is Mars Attacks. And his most watched movie of 1996 is Scream. For myself, most watched, third most watched goes to The Paul Bear. Well, that was a movie starring David Schwimmer and Gwyneth Paltrow. Gulia, Gulia, Gulia. I love this movie. And like I said, I'm a huge Wonder Years fan. And I love these sort of like, it's sort of like, it's a romantic comedy at the end of the day. Kind of a cool edge to it. Friends hanging out. David Schwimmer is great in it. So is Gwyneth Paltrow. Second most watched goes to Fargo. And most watched of 1996 goes to Happy Gilmore. And so the most watched by the Rad People panel, panel of normal people here is Happy Gilmore. The second place going to Scream. Next category, Raddest Movie of 1996. Finalist for Raddest Movie of 1996. The first one directed by Leon Gast. It's a documentary starring Muhammad Ali and George Foreman. The movie is When We Were Kings. The Rumble in the Jungle. Ali and Foreman, mostly Ali, to Zaire for The Rumble in the Jungle. Pre-concert, the show going up with James Brown and Bill Withers. The fight, but it's more about following Muhammad Ali as he prepares for basically his most famous match. The famous match where he does the rope a dope. For the longest time, it was my favorite sports documentary. I think my favorite sports documentary now is Senna about the race car driver. Cannot watch this movie and leave it not a fan of Muhammad Ali. His charisma, his passion, and his passion for his fans, and his passion for doing the right thing. Just incredible. I mean, this movie could be 15 fucking hours long. If you're following around Muhammad Ali at this point in his career, it's just it's incredible when you watch that stupid movie that uh will smith did about ali and it's like fucking hate that movie you know a lot of it's surrounding this stuff and it's just i think it's hot garbage the real deal is obviously way better i don't like the way they portrayed ali because ali is just amazing an amazing human being ali bumbaye Next up for finalist, uh, raddest movie of 1996. We're going back to Joel and Ethan Cohen, Fargo, uh, Francis McDormand, William H. Macy. Next finalist for raddest movie of 1996, Dennis Dugan's Carl Weathers and Adam Sandler in Happy Gilmore, also starring Christopher McDonald. And next up for finalist for raddest movie of 1996 goes to Train Spotting. Ewan McGregor stars in Danny Boyle's modern day classic. Now, two more finalists to go. A Waiting for Guffman, directed by Christopher Guest, starring Christopher Guest and Eugene Levy. That's a finalist for raddest movie of 1996. And the last finalist, directed by the Farrelly Brothers, starring Bill Murray and Woody Harrelson, Kingpin, about the uh, Amish bowler. And the raddest movie of 1996 goes to Safargo. From Joel and Ethan Cohen, was there ever a doubt? 
the runner up for raddest movie of 1996 goes to a movie just mentioned when we were kings we haven't been too crazy on documentaries up until this point it's this is just one that got mentioned by uh, most people on the panel also phenomenal movie you don't want to forget about what muhammad ali's documentary as far as this one goes they totally missed the ball this movie's way better than the english patient it's fargo well that does it that's 1996 in the fucking bag um thank you again to our panel of rad people especially carol thank you for joining on this lovely adventure so i just want to say thank you for that also thank you to the musicians um link in the description for the music playing during the outro check me out on patreon check me out on discord find me there link in the description will be a link on the screen right now a hashtag joe opinionated it's probably the easiest way to find me all over the interweb just a reminder to uh, be normal feel free to gank my list i won't rat you out live and let live mind your own fucking business i'm sorry i'm a little low on facts and high, and high on, opinions. on opinions. Respect to the raddest movie of 1996, Fargo. And respect to Carol, the guest. See you on the next one. There are 540,000 people, all of whom depend on me. I know some of them by name. I build their infrastructure and they know it is me I zone for high tech industry and name municipalities and when I close my eyes I see buildings and when I dream I dream of streets I close my eyes so So my garden